Welcome Crucible Cuties to another Andy Forge video. This is our 10th deck, I believe. You'll have to excuse me if my voice doesn't sound super great today. I believe I'm catching a cold. So hopefully that doesn't intervene with this deck review too much. Hope everybody's been having a good December. Uh, I know it is my favorite time of year, so I've been enjoying it myself. Okay. Me, I'll just pull it out of the bag here. Alrighty. So, to start her off, let's get the name and the Archon. A purple Archon, Dasynth, Madam the Old Oxley. Dasynth, Madam the Old Oxley. Interesting. Our token creature. Ooh, Prospector. Okay, probably one of the best token creatures this set. So our first house is Equidon. Next house is Brobnar. And then Unfathomable. Okay, wow. So this is actually one of the best house combos that this set can offer with the variety of different benefits that each of these houses provide. You know, all three of them together can be a really big powerhouse, um, especially with a Prospector. Uh, we could be looking to see a very, very good deck here. Um, wow, okay. The Archon looks really cool as well. Kind of all pieced together very well. All the limbs are the same. That kind of shroud and aura about it. And purple's a good color. Okay, well, give me one moment and we will get into the card reveal. Okay, we're here now with the card reveal. Here's an even closer look at that Archon there. Super, super cool. I love the head. It'd be perfect for like a Logos robot or something. But no Logos this set. Set the deck list to the side there. Then we've got our token. This is Prospector. It's the one power human creature with destroyed draw card. Really, really efficiency you can get out of that, with uh, especially with certain cards this set. Okay. Starting in Unfathomable, we've got a Skullback Crab. It is enhanced with a capture. It's one power with poison and action steal one amber. Then we've Kelp Minder here, five power creature that enhances a capture and two draw into the deck. Looks like we saw where that capture went. Ooh, Guilt Spine Netcaster enhances two capture into the deck. Two power creature with After Reap exhaust a creature. Frigorific Rod is an artifact with an amber pip on it. It says action, exhaust a creature or artifact. Ooh, and then Fathom Reaver, four power creature with play, make a token creature. While you control a token creature, your opponent refills their hand one less card during draw card step. Ooh, then we've got Befuddle. It's an action with an amp pip. Play, choose a house on your opponent's identity card. During their next turn, they cannot play cards of the other houses. Ooh, I read that weird. One more time. Choose a house on your opponent's identity card. During their next turn, they cannot play cards of other houses. So you pick a house, they basically have to play that house. But they can discard from other places. Then we've got Yonti Ghostfin here, three power creature with elusive, and after reap, purge a creature from a discard pile if you do make a token creature. Stir Crazy, it's an action with a amber pip. Play, each ready creature captures one amber from its opponent. We're getting a lot of capture. Then we've got the Kelping Hands, it's an artifact with an amber. Omni, destroy Kelping Hands. For the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature gains poison. That could be really good with Prospector. Oh, and then we've got Fuguru, like a uh, different version of Fathom Reaver, kind of. Uh, one power creature with poison. Your opponent refills their hand one less during their draw card step. Ooh, and then Guildbind School. This is one of my favorite cards with Prospectors. One power, five armor. Play, make three token creatures. Token creatures do not ready during their controller's ready card step. Oh, wow. Oh, in combo with Bryozoark? That is so good. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so Bryozoark is a six power creature that says when your opponent plays an action card, instead of resolving its play act, destroy the creature on your left flank. So if they ever play any actions, instead of resolving whatever that is, it'll just destroy your leftmost creature moving towards, hopefully, Bryozoark. You would want to play on your right flank. Um, so they would need some form of like creature-based creature control to get rid of this. And with Guiltspine School, it would be so easy to just 
play Guildspine School, get three token creatures, get Bryozoric. There's already four creatures in the way of those actions. Oh, I just wish we had like a taunt creature way to protect it. Maybe we'll get that in one of our other houses. Okay, we're on to Equidon. We're starting with the four power Shrewd Investor, Elusive, play. You may have your opponent gain one Amber if you do capture four or capture. Ooh, Generous Offer is great with Prospector. It's an action, it says play, destroy friendly creature if you do steal two Amber. Two of those, very nice. Gym Coat Vendor, six power creature with action, steal one, deal one damage to a Gym Coat Vendor. Dothoshra Recruiter with a drop hip. Drop hip is nice. Um, Dothoshra Recruiter can be good if you're able to get the reap effect off, but often feels like a dud when you first play it. It's four power creature that says after reap make a token creature. So having a drop hip makes it feel kind of good to play it, but also you don't hate it too much if you tokenized it. Got two of those. Belligerent Guard, eight power creature with it enters play ready and play your opponent draws a card. This is one of the best ways to get rid of a Bryozoric. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have that. Shizuku Swapper or Swooper. It's Swooper because that's an O. One power five armor. After fight, swap control of this creature and the creature it fights. Both creatures must survive the fight. Ooh, a Quiji Outpost, some great efficiency. It's an artifact with an amber on it. Action, put a friendly creature on the bottom of its owner's deck if you do draw three cards. Some great ways to kind of recur our guilt by Netcaster Bryozoark if we see them tokenized. Ooh, Jizdretio the Arcane. It's a three power creature with action, steal two amber. Flip Jizdretio the Arcane, it's down. It becomes a token creature. Two of those, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, token of appreciation. It's an action. Play. Make a token creature. Forge a key at plus seven current cost reduced by one for each friendly token creature. We'll have to look at our Equidon specific tokenizing. We've got two Dresdrayos and two Dothrasha recruiters. And that might be it. But that alone could be four in Equidon. If we have Bryzoark out and we make a bunch of other tokens, that could get out of hand. Interesting. Okay. We're to Brobnar now with Stratosmack. It got a capture bonus icon. Enhanced. It's an action that says play, deal three damage to a creature. If damage destroys that creature, make a token creature. Fantastic. Shock Herder with a capture. Three power with deploy. Play, ready, and fight with a neighboring creature. Very good. Ooh, Ragnarok prep. Okay, one of my favorite token making cards. It's an action, it says play, make a token creature. Then if you control more creatures than your opponent, your opponent loses two amber. Press gang, make a token creature. If an enemy creature was destroyed this turn, archive press gang. Very good. Then we've got pound. It's an action with an amber pit. Play, deal two damage to a creature with one damage, with one splash damage. Ooh, then we got Fresh Marks, another great card with Prospector. It's an action with an Amber Pip. Play, destroy friendly creature if you do exalt three enemy creatures. Ooh, two of those. We got Fire Spitter with a draw. It's five power, one armor, and before fight, one damage to each enemy creature. Great target for our Shockerter. Ooh, Bumsy, five power creature with play. Your opponent loses one Amber. Oh, Smith. I don't know that we have enough creatures in Brobnar for this to work. We've got a lot of actions. Uh, it's an action with an amber and it says play. Gain two amber if you control more creatures than your opponent. Oh, well this might help if we can get Shock Herder to, uh, to go off with this. Uh, feats of Strength, it's an action with an amber. Play for the remainder of the turn each time an enemy creature is destroyed in a fight, make a token creature. Two of those, okay. That could be really good if we can get our Shock Herder to, to go off, especially if the creature was already ready. Say fight the Fire Spitter, Shock Herder the same Fire Spitter. We could make four Prospectors and kill off some creatures, theoretically. Um, this deck seems really good. Uh, it is uh, exactly as advertised with the Equidon and Brobnar. It's got a lot and uh, unfathomable. It's got a lot of weird combos in it that feel like they might be trying to split in too many different directions, but I feel like it could come together really well, especially with some expert piloting after some experience with the deck and how it feels. 
Um, give me one moment, I will split everything up and then we will be back with the deck breakdown. Alrighty, here we are now with the deck breakdown. Got our usual piles, there's our token creature, uh, amber control, no, is that right? Yeah, amber control, expected amber, uh, oh, token of appreciation is throwing me off. Um, artifact control and creature control, then our token generation pile. Um, I thought that the last deck was going to be probably the highest sass deck we get in this display, but I was proven very wrong. There is our sass, looking at a healthy 91. Um, it is huge. It is mostly from our base score, which I'll be honest, is mostly from prospectors, which makes sense. Prospector gets kind of bloated as far as sass scores go, I think. Um, the synergy is 14. The meta is minus four. We have a negative two for board clears and a negative two for creature control, which is super important in this meta. And we've got almost no creature control, basically. Um, there are extras and counts. We've got 11 bonus amber, which that was a bit more, but our expected amber is not too bad. Uh, we've got one key cheat in token of appreciation. Then we've got 14 actions, which is one above average, 19 creatures, which is one above average, uh, three artifacts, which is about average, and then no upgrades, which is where the uh, two additional cards came from. Then our token generation score is 18. Um, a lot of that is from the Feats of Strength, Press Gang, and Guilt Spine School. Um, I will say Feats of Strength um, doesn't seem like it would trigger too often in this deck. Um, I would probably lower the score of Feats of Strength to a 1 or maybe even a 0.5 in a deck like this. Um, if we can get the fight to happen with Shock Herder, it's great. You just have to get the fight to happen. And that's the only like ready and fight enabler that we have in Brobnar is our Shock Herder. Um, Press Gang seems to fire just fine. We have some pretty good damage actions. Uh, and Guild Spine School will fire, uh, fire every time. Uh, just because it's play it, get three. Um, so super, super interesting. Uh, I will say I actually ended up playing uh, with this deck um, in between the last cut and this one. I put it into TCO. I got one game in, you know, sitting in this chair. I, I haven't moved or anything. Um, just to see how it felt. I mean, 91 sass is huge. I wanted to give a very thorough breakdown. So that will, um, come into this discussion. Uh, but I will say at least from that one game and a couple other games that I've had with high sass prospector decks, I think that maybe the token generation score in combination with prospector score itself can help to blow a deck. Um, negative things like the creature control, um, uh, while it is doing a whole minus four to my sass score, it honestly in situations like this might need to be higher or the the general things with prospect and stuff need to be rated lower. Um, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I am uh, far from the arbiter of sass, uh, but let's get those out of the way. There is our amber control uh, or amber and control section. Uh, we've got 11 in our amber control, 21 in our expected amber, very high, but very good. I think that's super accurate. Uh, the 0.3 in artifact control is just our frigorific rod, which you'll see. Uh, and then our creature control is 4.7, which is real bad. So let's dig into these. Uh, so Shizuku Swooper is actually a very important card in this deck, um, if you can get it to fire. Um, in the one game that I did play with it, I actually was able to use uh, Stir Crazy and a couple other of our like capture pips and things to slap stuff onto Shizuku Swooper. And then on a turn where I also um, generous offered, I sent Swooper over and then all of that captured amber went to the opponent's side. So that was really nice. Skullback Crab, one of the, the capture pips in question. It's action Steal. Kelp Minder enhancing a capture into the deck. We've got a lot of capture spread throughout kind of randomly. It's very interesting. And then we've got Jizdrutyo. I wasn't able to get the Jizdrutyos to go off in my game. Um, Jizdrutyo is kind of hard in general to make happen. Going back into Equidon isn't great, but you can do it for four Stolen Amber easily. Um, it is just hard to play the creature and then it survive until your next Equidon turn. Two Capture Enhanced by Guilt by Netcaster. Uh, 
Jimco Vendor, a good steal. Shrewd Investor. What I love about Shrewd Investor is um, with the way that Generous Offer is worded, which you'll see in here in just a second, if your opponent has three Amber and you play Shrewd Investor, you would give them one and then capture four, so you would capture all four. If you Generous Offer Shrewd Investor, the way that Generous Offer is worded results in you destroying Shrewd Investor first, the Amber returns to your opponent's pool, then it checks to see if that creature was destroyed, and then if it was, you steal two. So there isn't any, like, Lapse if you can just generate amber just to take it there. Stir crazy, one of our capture cards. Bumpsy for a lose one. Ragnarok prep for a lose two. This is a really good card. The problem is we don't have a whole lot of creatures in uh, Brobnar. Um, so it doesn't, it's harder to flood the board. You really need stuff like the press gang or the uh, the Ragnarok prep itself makes a token creature or strato smack to kind of come into your hand at the right time or feats of strength you can fight off with your fire spitter a couple times. Uh, then we have our generous offers here. Super, super good. Yeah, so it says destroy a friendly creature, period. So it'll check to do that. And then if you do, steal two amber. Separation there allows you to do a lot of stuff with captured amber, which is super, super sweet. Okay, then we are on to our expected amber here. Um, Token of Appreciation is in here, so I decided to add it because Sass gave it points. I'm assuming just because the idea of making a free key could be a lot of amber, or maybe it's the fact that you're making a token creature, um, but that's there. Smith is pretty obvious, can give us a total of three amber. It's another one of those where I wish maybe we had a few more Brobnar creatures instead of some of the actions, but not bad. Ooh, and then our double fresh marks. Double fresh marks is huge. It is a, a lot of amber uh, and is relatively easy, especially with a prospector deck, um, to get to go off. We have just enough token making to make sure that this happens. Um, or at the very least, we can get all of our usefulness out of our shock herder and then just send the shock herder to its doom so we can get extra amber. Frigorific Rod is our only form of artifact control. It is just exhausting. So if it's an artifact that has passive effects, uh, we're a little screwed, but that's okay. There are a lot of decks that don't have artifact control um, that can do just fine. It'll just be, it would be really important in competitive play that we're missing that. Um, but otherwise I think it is a-okay. And then our creature control, nothing super crazy in here. We've got Kelping Hands for Poison, Shock Herder for Ready and Fight, Blur Joint Guard is super important, comes in ready at 8 power, Pound, 2 damage with 1 splash, uh, Strato Smack for 3 direct damage, and then Fire Spitter. Fire Spitter being super big because it is the closest thing that we have to a board wipe. Ideally, we get Shock Herder and Fire Spitter in hand at the same time, um, or if we have a really safe way to play our Fire Spitter. Uh, but Fire Spitter is going to be just super, super important in this deck, especially against other Winds of Exchange decks, because it's the closest thing we'll have to a board wipe with that spread out one damage. And this is just token generation stuff separated by houses. Uh, these didn't fit into any of the other categories. Yanti Ghostfin with a little bit of disruption, followed by token making. Fathom Wraith just play Make One. Guilt Spine making three. Press Gang makes one and can archive both of our feats of strength and then both of our recruiters. So all in all, very, very interesting. The game that I had, I ended up losing. I had two keys my opponent had uh, for as they're forged their last. I think I might have been checking for my third or I was just under it. They had a closed door negotiation, which held me off twice, actually. Um, so I was making a lot of amber, uh, but the lack of creature control came into play huge. Uh, I was unable to uh, fight their Zizok, which actually became very, very important as it would continuously fight into my prospectors and take out bigger targets next to them by using its skirmish and splash attack. Uh, and then two Memrocks hit the board and I had to deal with those instead of focusing on my other game plan. Uh, and then Bryozoric was taken out pretty easy by the double Zizok that they had going on. So it, it was a tough fight. Um, we did end up 
you know, very, very close. Um, but I think that uh, having such little creature control is just such a huge drawback because it really does start to dip into the other aspects of the deck. You know, like I could be making way more expected amber if I could reap with my creatures, but I can't destroy my opponent's creatures and they're either increasing key cost or fighting off my creatures or something like that. Um, I think creatures are just such an important part of the Keyforge meta right now that it's really, really hard for any deck with just zero or very little creature control to make a whole lot of headway in certain competitive games. There are definitely games where you can zoom by so fast it really doesn't matter. And I'm sure I could experience stuff like that with this deck, uh, as well as any of you could with your, your very speedy decks. Um, but it isn't going to be uh, consistent, and consistency is what you really, really want to see uh, if you're really trying to, to go at it. Uh, okay, we'll clear that away. There is our speed and board, the very last section. Uh, 18 efficiency, which is huge, but again, a lot of that is Prospector. Uh, we do have two other bonuses in there, an Equiji Outpost and Kelp Minder, adding two draws. Our board is of a decent size, uh, thanks mostly to Guildspine School and Belligerent Guard. Uh, but then we also have a couple of other six power creatures in there uh, in combination with their armor. You know, Jimco Vendor, Shrewd Investor is, I think, four power and elusive, so it counts that as a six. That's interesting. Um, and then we've got our Shizuku Swooper, Bryozoark, um, some big creatures. Our recursion, the only thing is the Equiji Outpost, because it puts something in the bottom of our deck. Creature protection, there is nothing. Really would have loved to see, like, some sort of taunt or upgrade or something that I could slap on my Bryozoark, just because of how truly effective that can be, especially in the early game if my opponent doesn't have a board of creatures out. Um, but that's another thing, you know, a low creature control can really step into Bryozoark's territory, where... You know, if I can keep creatures off the opponent's board, then Bryozark can live rent-free forever. Uh, but if I have no way of consistently dealing with opponent's creatures, even if they're playing them exhausted, then eventually they will just fight Bryozark away. Our disruption is pretty big at an 8.6 with Bryozark, Befuddle, Fathom Reaver, Fuguru, and Yanti Ghostfin. Uh, and then it's a minus 0.5 because Belligerent Guard makes our opponent draw a card. And then in other on board, we have Shizuku Swooper at one point, uh, assumedly just because it swaps places with an opponent's creature. Clear that away. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I know there hasn't been a huge like differentiation in content recently. Sorry, uh, life has been uh, real, real rough with work and a variety of other things. Um, so I'm trying to get maybe more shorts or another video idea brewing. Uh, it's just hard to find the time. So I appreciate everybody who tunes in uh, every other week. You guys are awesome. Uh, we've got more stuff coming down the pipelines. Uh, and thank you. And remember, the most important part of Keyforge is the person sitting across the table. Have a great rest of your day.